Good to be saved this morning, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles to 1 Kings 19, and y'all don't tell Brother Tony that I was preaching in this, and he'll do a lot better job at it than I will, but i am just been infatuated with the life of Elijah and Elisha here recently, and uh, I think the whole Bible's good. Uh, you got your favorite parts sometimes you study in. And uh, 1 Kings 19, and we're just going to read one verse there. In verse 8, it said, And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the, in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the man of God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll touch your word, touch your people this morning. We need to hear from you this morning, dear Jesus. Get us out of the way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, we all know the story of Elijah, and, we, and we're all familiar with this story, how in uh, chapter 18, he had just called fire down from heaven with 63 words, Brother Daniel, and he had a great mountaintop experience. But I want to say after every great mountaintop, there will be a valley. There will be a downtime. And that's just the way our Christian life is. And compare it to a roller coaster. It goes up and down. I don't like roller coasters, and I don't like valleys, but it happens, Brother Rich. And Elijah had done this great work through God, and God had blessed him and used him greatly and mightily. And the next chapter, the very next chapter, Jezebel sits out people to kill him. Sits out and said, I'm going to cut your head off. And he said, my goodness, he got scared to death. And I know all y'all are super spiritual this morning. Y'all wouldn't have got scared about that. But I've been pretty scared about that, and so was Elijah, amen. He said, I, they, they said, we're going to kill you. He was already the last one that, of his kind. He, they said, we're going to kill you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And he got scared to death. And he got under the juniper tree here in Burke chapter 19. And he, he, he said, woe is me, woe is me. And he got down and out about everything. And how many of y'all been there this morning? Just be honest with me, amen. You got a mountaintop the next day, it seems like Satan's attacking you. I've been there, amen. I've been there in the past two weeks, Brother Chris. It just happens, amen. And, but the, I, the title of the message this morning is Don't Stop Now. Don't stop now. God did some things in Elijah's life right here. God did some things. When he was up on that mountaintop, the next chapter and next episode of his life, he was down in the valley. He said, don't stop now, Elijah. He did some things. He showed him some things from the past. You see, in this our text verse, it said he went to Horeb, the Mount of God. If, anybody, if, if, you, if you study over there in Exodus, uh, uh, everything just about Moses' ministry started at Horeb. It's just the way it was. Uh, Mount Sinai, it, 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 Horeb is in the Sinai mountain range. All those things that happened to Moses was in that mountain range. And I'm glad we got some places we can go back, Brother Chris, that the men of God and the women of God in our past, God helped them at those places. The, the family altar, the Bible, the church. We need to get back to those things this morning. We need to get back to the old time way. Hey, we don't need new programs. It, it kills me. I don't know why I'm saying this, but we don't need the praise team and all these things and they think that that draws people in the Holy Ghost has been doing a pretty good job at drawing folks in for a lot of years amen I think we ought to just let him keep on drawing them in amen now I'm all for going and knocking on doors but I'm talking about this foolishness they're letting into our churches today that's ruining our churches amen but don't stop now hey just because the crowds get a little low just because you get discouraged don't stop going back to the old ways amen but this morning, he showed uh, Elijah some things. And we got to hurry this morning. But he showed Elijah some things on that mount that he did for Moses. If you look, and I, and I don't want to get real deep into it, but if you remember in Exodus chapter uh, 17, he told Moses to go to the rock at Horeb and smite the rock. The people were thirsty. They were dry. They didn't have the water. And God told Moses to go to the rock at Horeb and smite the rock. When that rock was smitten, the water came out freely. Hey, that's a picture of Jesus Christ. Amen. They provided, uh, God provided for the children of Israel. It blows my mind that one rock got smoked and, and watered all them cattle, watered all them people. That's amazing. But I'm glad 2,000 years ago, there was a rock smitten on Calvary. Amen. He laid his life down for us. Hey, he got he took his life back up. He gave it freely and took it back up. He's the only person to do that. But when that rock was smoked on Calvary, there was a provision made, just like in the desert. And I'm telling you this morning, we've got provision through Christ this morning. Amen. 
That rock, there is a fountain. That's ironic. I, well, it's not ironic. It's God. Amen. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Amen. I'm glad that that rock isn't giving up. Amen. That rock's still flowing for it freely this morning. But there was a provision in the desert and God reminded Elijah that there would be a provision in his day of need. But not only was there a provision, but there were precepts. Exodus 19, uh, Moses goes up on Mount Sinai, which is in the same region as Horeb. It's the same place. And he goes and God gives him the Ten Commandments. Now see why the reason Elijah was in trouble and the reason he was down and out, he had been preaching the word of God, thus saith the Lord. He had been calling it straight, amen. Like Brother Tony talked about the other night, been cutting heads off, amen. And they was mad about it. Let me say, when you preach on sin, they will talk about you, they will get mad at you, they will call you a Pharisee. The liberal's favorite verse is, judge not to be not judged. That's the only Bible they know. I was reading over in 1 Timothy, it said the law is not for the righteous. This for the whoremongers and the liars and all those things. Hey, we need to preach on sin because it will draw people to conviction. He reminded Elijah, he said, I gave Moses them precepts, them ten command of them that law. He said, I gave Moses that law. And the, and the very minute he walked that down off the mountain, they was already sinning. He said, he said, Elijah, you're not the first man of God they bucked. They're not, you're not the first man of God they talked about. You're not the first man of God they doubted and said, well, he's crazy off his rocker. Hey, he done lost his, rock, uh, lost his mind. That's not the first man of God that's happened to. This morning, hey, if it was right 20 years ago, it's right this morning, amen. Hey, if it was wrong 20 years ago, it's wrong this morning. You say, well, culture's changed. The Muslims had not changed in 150,000 years. Hey, the, Mo the Muslims hadn't changed in 2,500 years. Why do we have to change? They ain't got the truth this morning. We got the truth. Hey, them precepts. He reminded them precepts that was still true. But the next thing, he reminded them of the promise. Exodus chapter 3, he talked to them through a burning bush. He said, Moses, I want you to go deliver my people out of Egypt. He said, God, I can't do that. God, I, I can't do it. God promised he would take care of him and use him no matter his deficiencies. And I want to say this morning, God reminded Elijah this morning that he said, I will use you, I will, I've called you, I've already used you, but I'm going to use you again despite your doubt in me. And this morning, child of God, I don't know what you're going through this morning, but God is trying to remind us this morning, if he's called you, he will equip you to what he's called you to do. Amen. He wants to, hey, you say, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And I get so tired of people uh, saying that you can't. God can this morning. You can't, but God can this morning. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. We get so down and out and we get so discouraged about what we can't do. Think about what God's done for us this morning. He's been merciful to us. He's used us when we ought to be burning in the pits of hell this morning. God used us, amen. Last Wednesday night, we, we got, it got on. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? On. The Yankees call it on. They got, it got on. Amen. It got on. Yeah, y'all can laugh. Amen. A merry heart. Do it good like a medicine. Amen. Y'all looking at me like a calf at a new gate this morning. Amen. But we, it got on last Wednesday night. I was out there walking in the woods behind the tabernacle, and I got jealous of the trees, Brother Chris. Never in my life. I, I got jealous of the trees. And you say, well, you're crazy. And I am. Amen. But I was looking up at the trees, and Lord, Lord was doing some things in my heart. I was looking up at the trees. And you know, they get to praise God all day long. They just lift their arms up. They, they, the grass, the grass praises God all day long. Hey, ain't that Bible? Ain't that Bible? That's what they're doing. The bushes and the grass. I'm jealous because God has called us. If anything, he said, I, we, we ought to, I will praise thee, O Lord, with thy whole heart and show forth all thy marvelous works. If anything, you say, well, I can't do anything else. You can praise Amen. God this morning. Amen. But he, that, he showed, he reminded him of the provision, the precepts, and the promise. But in verse 13, he, he was having that pity party. He wrapped his mantle up and he put his face in his mantle. You ever just sat down? And you're having a pity party and you're down and out. And you said, Lord, what am I doing? What am I doing? You ever came to yourself, Brother Chad? You said, well, duh. God showed him all these things. And he said, 
God's done that in the past. Look what God's done in my life. Why do I need to quit now? Why? Don't stop now, church. Hey, it might be looking bleak and bad. Hey, we might not be running the numbers, but God's people have always suffered reproach for standing for what was right. And I want to say this morning, God will provide. He's given us a promise. He's going to provide this morning. He's going to lift us up in these last days because we've got the truth this morning. Don't stop now. But he reminded them things. And quickly, I want to give you three things. He came to himself. And I want to say every Christian can avoid stopping by looking at these three reasons God gave Elijah not to quit this morning. And if you still got your Bibles open, I want to read verse 16. And it said, And Jehu the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of abel Mahola, uh, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Now listen, this ain't so much for the kids, but this is for the older folks. There's a responsibility. You can't stop because there's a responsibility this morning. You say, what are you talking about? He said, you've got to anoint Elisha to be prophet in thy room. This morning, older folks, you can't stop now. I, 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 it saddens me so bad to see old timers just quit right, right there at the finish line. Just the, the finish line's right here and they say, well, it's just too hard. You can't stop now because of the responsibility to this next generation this morning. Hey, you say, well, I wish they worshiped like we used to in the old time way. And, and then you talk about the old days. We can have it right now. Hey, you want these kids to worship like in the old time way? You want these kids to live right? You want these kids to do right? Why don't we start doing right? Why don't we start worshiping? Amen. I'll go to church, and I'm not lifting Brother Jacob up. I thank God for what he's done in his heart. But the other night, Brother Jacob was sitting up here doing all this, and he took off running. And half the people in this auditorium looked at him funny. Hey, man. Looked at him funny. Hey, 30 years ago, they'd have ran with him. You'd have ran with him. And you just, well, I don't know if that's real or not. I don't know if that's real or not. We got enough wet blankets in this stuff. Thing. Hey, we got enough wet blankets in this thing without you throwing yours on, amen. Hey, I'm glad that we got some young people. Hey, that's running out. Hey, that's better than them running after the liquor store, amen. It's better than them running after a football this morning. Hey, they're running after Jesus this morning, amen. Hey, we got a responsibility. We got a responsibility to this next generation. Hey, if we don't tell them, who will? Amen. Hey, when they start running and shouting, this is the pastor, amen. Let him worry about what wildfire is. Hey, I'd rather them be burning a wildfire than burning a cigarette this morning, amen. Hallelujah this morning. A responsibility to the next generation. You know what, Brother Jody? If somebody don't preach hellfire and damnation, your kids, they'll never get saved. This liberal sway and come for a sermonette and all that junk. Hey, that ain't getting them in, neighbor. If we don't preach, your kids might never get saved. It'd be a shame. Listen now, this is serious. It'd be a shame one day we hit the judgment seat. And your kids scream out, Mama! Daddy! Why did you quit on God? Why did you go and compromise? Mama, Daddy, why did you stop? Is they're cast into hell. I believe we're going to see that. Hey. Hey, it's sad, but it's true. If we stop, if we compromise, will my wife and them like it down at the praise center? Tell that to Jesus at the judgment seat. It ain't going to cut it with him, amen. Anyways, before I get everybody mad. Is it worth it this morning? Is it worth it this morning to sell your family out, to sell this old time way out, to pass the flesh this morning? We got a responsibility. Don't stop now. I know it gets weary and tired. I'm just a young man, but I, I have burdens just like you have burdens. I know it gets weary and tired, and the devil seems like he's riding you back all the time. Hey, you just tell him where he can go this morning and keep going for God this morning. But not only is there a responsibility, but there is a reckoning. Verse 17, And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. The reckoning of the wicked. 
There has to be a reckoning with the wicked. Now, I'm not saying go cut sinners' heads off. That's not what I'm saying. Amen. Not condoning that. But I am saying there has to be something done with sinners. There has to be. He said, you can't quit because there's some sinners that have to be dealt with. I've said it once, but we are the only ones that's got the truth this morning. Hey, the Bible, I, you say, well, you shouldn't be like that. I believe that the Baptist doctrine, the Baptist faith is this Bible. If you're a Baptist, you believe this Bible. You're a biblicist, you're a Baptist, you believe this Bible. But this morning, we are the ones that's got the truth. If you're saved this morning, you've got the truth in you. And there has to be a reckoning with sinners. You know why we hand out gospel tracts? You know why we hand these out? To reckon with sin. See, this modern movement, they're all about good feeling and all this. I had a woman tell me one time, well, I just don't like going to a Baptist church because I feel uncomfortable. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. We ought to feel uncomfortable. We ought to feel without conviction there will be no conversion this morning. There has to be a reckoning with sin. If we don't tell them about Jesus, nobody will, and they'll bust hell wide open this morning. People talk about taking mission trips all the time. I wish we could take a mission trip to hell this morning for five minutes. That rich man's still screaming, Brother Daniel. Give me a drop of water! Give me a drop of water! That friend, kids, that we could have witnessed to in high school that might have died, went straight to hell. They're screaming... Chris, why didn't you tell me about hell? Why didn't you tell me about hell? You knew. There has to be a reckoning with sinners. If we don't reckon with them. If we stop now, the future generation, we're only one generation away, and you, you back me up if, if I'm wrong, we're only one generation away from this thing being gone altogether. One generation away. You read Romans 1 and you'll find that out. But what are you doing today? Are you stopping or are you reckoning with sinners this morning? Not only there's a responsibility of reckoning, but there's a remnant. Verse 18, and I'll be done. It says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. <coughs> Ooh. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. I want to say this morning, don't stop now because there's still some out there that believe the same way we do. Hey, there's still some out there, some independent, fundamental, premillennial, sweat, sweat, wiping, spit, slinging, amen, fundamental Baptists this morning. They're still out there this morning and they're still going for God and they might need you to keep going this morning. You say, what are you talking about? It encourages my heart. Brother Chris Simpson's one of my best friends in this world. Me and him got a close bond. But it encourages my heart when God's doing something at White Oak Springs. Bad. We're just 15 minutes down the road, 10 minutes down the road. But it tickles me to death when y'all have good meetings. It makes me happy when y'all have good things happen here. Because y'all are in the old time way. And I say, if they can do it at White Oak, he can do it at Ridge Road Baptist Church. And he can do it at Word of Life. And he can do it at Pine Ridge this morning. God can do it again. Listen, this thing ain't over, amen. Hey, we can still see revival. And you say, well, I don't believe that. You don't believe in the same God I do if you don't believe in revival, amen. God can send revival, but it's up to us to get in that remnant, not to bow our knees to Baal, not to bow our knees to this world, to stay clean, to stay pure, and keep going in this old time way. Would to God some of us would put our faces in our hand this morning. Hey, it's not better on the other side. It's not better on the other side. Can I give one illustration? I'll be done. We had this, I used to work at a dairy farm. I had this favorite cow, and y'all don't laugh at me. Her, her number was number 35, the prettiest little Jersey cow you ever seen in your life. And I was, I, 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 I milked the cows and everything every day, twice a day. Well, 35 had a bum foot. She didn't get all the grass and the feed like everybody else did. And i never forget, and I called Daddy that day. We had this thing called a dredge pool. You know what a dredge pool is, Brother Daniel? It ain't good, amen. It's, it's a sewage pool for cattle at the end of the dairy barn. But, of course, during the summer, grass would grow on top of that stuff. Now, it was soft. I mean, you, you couldn't stand on this stuff. But there was grass all over the top of that. Green grass, mind you. The best grass on the farm. But that dairy cow, she got tired, 
she got worn out because she had that bum foot. I'd have to go and get her. All the other cows, I could call them. I'd have to go and get her every day and walk her to the barn by myself. Well, one morning, I didn't. I closed the gate, and I milked all the cows, and I said, she was always the last one in. I said, man, 35's not in here this morning. I went to looking for her, Brother Jody. She had walked over the electric fence. Now, mind you, she's tired. She's worn out. She don't get all the good food like the other cows do because she can't get out to where it's at. She's about ready to quit. She stepped over the electric fence. I bet she'd been looking at it for days. She stepped over the electric fence and went walking on the concrete out to that dredge pool where that grass was. Before you know it, I was out there. I walked out there, and all you could see was this part of 35. She had her head up going, ma, ma. And she had done sunk in that dredge pool. She thought that grass was so much better out there in that dredge pool. But as soon as she got in there, Boom, she dropped. I want to say, and it took a lot to get her out. She almost died that day. Hey, you might not get out if you compromise on this thing. Your kids might not get out if you compromise on this thing. This morning, the grass ain't greener on the other side. Don't stop. I believe with all my heart, and I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't believe it, this is the right and the good way this morning. Don't stop now this morning. It ain't over, amen.